Hello Iron Front fans, this is Gunther Severlo. Today I would like to introduce to you a new mission mode for Iron Front in Arma 3 called Ragnarok 44. Ragnarok 44 is a mission based on Window of Opportunity by Moncalb. Uh, this original mission that he built was created in Arma 2OA and then ported to Iron Front and now ported again to Iron Front in Arma 3. Uh, in this mission mode you play as a an officer where you can recruit, build, command forces, capture objectives, gather resources, and basically build an army to uh, destroy your enemy. Now, uh, where we are at right now is the headquarters where all Ragnarok 44 missions start. Uh, these officers here are mainly for aesthetics, just kind of give you a feeling that you're a commander. And of course you have a map and so forth which also have no function in themselves. Uh, if you we look to the side here, we have two options in the action menu. The first is called the commander screen, which you can see here, and clicking on that uh, takes you to the battlefield where the mission is played. The second option is called controls help. We click on that, that brings up a list of various commands and controls that you could use while playing the game. I'll leave that up to you guys. You could pause the video and uh, review those. The mission also comes with a, a PDF, which lists all these controls. So if you have any questions or problems trying to control the uh, keys and whatnot in the game, then you can refer to that. But I will be going over those uh, in the demo here. All right, let's go to the battlefield. So we'll scroll our action menu here and go to the commander screen. Here we are on the battlefield. When you get to the battlefield, the first thing you see is a building, a soldier, this icon, and this box with a box and an uh, electricity bolt in it and some numbers. To start off with, um, this icon represents this soldier. This represents your, the box represents your supplies. Like the supplies means uh, the amount of ammo you have, building materials. And this uh, electricity, electric bolt, lightning bolt rather, represents your energy and your fuel. And these numbers represent the total amount of those that you have. The plus 20 means the income of those amount that you have coming in that adds to your total amount. All right, this building is your headquarters. This is basically your base. And this is where everything is done in this mission. To begin with, what I want to do is go over the camera controls as this is an RTS mission. So to start off with, you have your cursor and when you move your cursor to uh, the front or forward, your camera will move forward. If you move it down, it'll move back. If you move it to the left, it'll move left. If you move it to the right, it'll move right. So basically you could just kind of play around with it like that. In my opinion, it's a little bit too sensitive so it can be tweaked. Uh, just letting you guys know this is a beta version of this mission mode so there's still features and functions that need to be tweaked there still might be bugs and errors and issues uh, for now let's keep going on with the camera controls now another camera control is where when you hold down your middle mouse button and you move your mouse forward your camera will pan down like this if you move your mouse back while holding down your middle mouse button, your, the screen will pan like that. So you can get a top-down view if you want. Now, if you still, while holding the middle mouse button down, if you move your mouse to the left, your screen will pan to the right. If you move your mouse to the right, your screen will pan left. So you can go all the way around your base, get a decent view of what's going on. 
All right, uh, just to give you some idea of some other controls related to this, if you, let's say you're way out here or something and you want to get back to the base, well, instead of having to move your camera, oh, here I am, I'm back at the base, what you can do is you press H on your keyboard and it takes you right back to your base. If you have, let's say, a different view, Let's say you had this and you were again somewhere out in the field and you pressed backspace. Backspace returns you to the original view. If you're at home and this is your, you know, the view that you're working with, backspace will return you to the front. So it just it uh, returns you to a default view. All right, let's go go over a couple more things. Um, this soldier um, kind of comes with a mission. You don't when you build your own Ragnarok 44 missions. You don't. This guy was just added and grouped to the commander, so you cannot have them if you want. So it's, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Then also this, you have four static MGs that were placed. Basically, just protect the base. That's what they're there for. You don't have to have them. You could just start with just the building if you want. So you got, you know, one here, one there, one there, and one here. This trench, however, is just part of the mission. Something I added to uh, add, you know, kind of atmosphere and ambience, as well as some function to the uh, mission itself. All right, let's get to some other functions and features of this mission. As you can see, you see a square that highlights when I hover my mouse cursor over it. This soldier is represented by this. So when you click on this, the camera will go right to that soldier. If you were in this view already, the camera will take you right there. If I'm way over here and this I'm this close to the ground and I click on this, you'll make the camera will stay where it's at and zoom to where this guy is positioned. Same if you were way out here and at this view and if you click here you'll get the same view but you'll be brought to where your soldier is. Now this this is for all things that you recruit and build uh, that for units anything that has an AI in it like a you know just just a soldier or a truck or a tank or even a static weapon that shows up anything that will show up here uh, the camera was on, will zoom to to them. Will bring bring the camera to that position. All right. Um, let's start with the base itself. Uh, when you click on the base, you get this menu. And in this menu, you get three buttons. The top button is the construction vehicle, which is the most important one. And below that is a comment. It says construction vehicle dash 504 slash OC and then some other numbers. The 500 represents your supplies, which is this box. And when you subtract 500 for this, then you get less than what you got. So the P stands for, at the far right there, stands for P is for power, and it subtracts from this. Well, obviously, this doesn't have any requirements for power, so we're good there. The far right number that says dash 30 S is the time it takes to build this particular vehicle. Now this construction vehicle is important for every building because it's required in order to build a building. So let's start off and build one. Q1 up. Now when you click on the button you get uh, current means construction vehicle which is being built and then the total in Q is 1. Let's build uh, two more, and total in Q is three, and we have three of them. Now, if you want to deselect the screen, just click on the empty space. And the same goes for the soldier. If you click on the soldier and want to change to something else, you just click on empty space, and it'll deselect them. In order to command anything in this mission mode, you have to, they have to be highlighted. When they're highlighted, you get this blue dotted circle around them and again to unselect them you just click on the ground near them or wherever. Uh, this other thing that shows up for infantry for infantry, 
is you get this green bar. This green bar represents their state of health. If it's down the red, they're basically dying or almost dead. And then it gives a description, Sentinel being one unit. One units, one of one, so it's one. And then you have a level. Yes, you can upgrade and better your unit's skills. And of course the status of what they're what they're doing. So this guy is standing and he's engaging at will when and if there is an enemy that he'll run into. Alright, we have two construction vehicles. Uh, construction vehicles are rep represented by this icon. And when you click on them, they get automatically highlighted. Now we have a third one, which is this guy that just got highlighted. And anything that you built will pop up here on the left-hand side. And it'll, it'll give a brief description of what it is. All right, to start off, uh, moving things around with these vehicles and units. Now this unit, we're going to take this unit to start with. We'll click on him. In order to move him around, what you'll do is you first highlight him by clicking on him, and then you right-click on the ground, hold your right mouse button, and move your mouse around, and the arrow indicates the direction that he's going to face. So if I face him this way and release my mouse button, the soldier will go to that spot and turn around and face that direction. Now, you got these other buttons here. Um, one is to stop. Obviously, stop is self-explanatory. You have go to prone, which is self-explanatory. Uh, hold fire, which means he won't fire. And then you have return to base. If I click on return to base, he'll return back to base, which is this building. And you can see he's going back to the base. And most likely, for infantry, they'll actually go inside. Well, at least I thought he would. <laughs> so I'm just going to put him here for now. And we're going to go off to these trucks. Now these trucks are very important because you need them and you need them in order to build your buildings and your army. All right, clicking on this truck, he is highlighted. And you could build three types of buildings with these trucks with the basic construction vehicle. You could build a barracks, which costs 300 of the supplies and no it doesn't cost any power. You can build a car factory, which costs 700 of the supplies and 400 power. And you can build a hospital, uh, which costs 100 of the supplies and 150 of the power. Takes 60 seconds uh, before it's complete. This one takes 100 seconds before it's complete. And this one takes 30 seconds before it completes. Now, before you go and decide to build any building, you're going to want to move these trucks somewhere away from the main headquarters. Otherwise you're going to get a conflict. Buildings will be right next to each other. You're not going to have any space. So we've got all this space to use to build a building. And to start off we're going to use make move this guy uh, right about here. So I basically just click on him so he's highlighted. Right click on the ground. Face him the direction I want and let go of the right mouse button and he'll go there. Now that, it, now that he is at that position, uh, we're going to click on the barracks button. And the icon up here will disappear because uh, he basically is transforming or being built into a, a building. And you won't have any options uh, to see how long it, this is taking. It, it takes 30 seconds. So while that's going, we're going to look at another uh, construction vehicle. Construction vehicle is CV for short. I usually just stay, say construction vehicle, but... All right, the barracks are now completed, which is this building. So you get this banner that shows up briefly. And this building uh, is the barracks. Uh, you can recruit six types of infantry. Uh, you have a four-man squad which costs 100 uh, of the supplies, it takes 24 seconds. And you have a big infantry squad, which costs 300 of the supplies and takes 72 seconds to build. You have a sniper, which costs 350 seconds and 20 of the uh, powers to build and 40 seconds. You have an AT infantry squad, which is composed of three uh, soldiers 
costs 250 of the supplies and, and 80 of the power. It takes 40 seconds to build. Then you have an MG infantry squad, which consists of also three guys. Actually, I think it's four guys, but it takes uh, 320 of the power of the supplies and 30 of the power. It takes 40 seconds to build. And then you have a special forces squad, which costs 450 of the supplies and 150 of the power and takes 90 seconds to build. The special forces squad have an additional um, functions and features to them where they could uh, do different stuff, but I'll, I'll show you that when we get to that point. First, let's build a small infantry squad and then a large infantry squad, a sniper, AT infantry squad, and then an MG squad. As you can see, this banner that comes up, it says enemy forces are attacking a strategic point. Uh, there is an AI enemy in the mission mode. Uh, I'll, I'll go over him in a few moments after we uh, you know, start going over these guys a little bit. All right, small infantry squad has been recruited, and you get four guys, which is represented by this box and the number four at the bottom corner. I'm going to move these guys over here for now. And as you can see, it has the same menu as did the uh, small infantry, or uh, one soldier that we looked at previously. And uh, we have, as you can see in the box here, it has a loading bar, and that's for what's going to be uh, spawning next, which is the big infantry squad. After that will be the sniper, and we have a total of four, four uh, infantry soldiers uh, left to spawn. Now going back to a, a construction vehicle, the construction vehicle has its own menu. Like I said, we have a barracks we can build, we have a car factory we can build, and a hospital. As we know already, the barracks uh, builds infantry, uh, the car factory can build uh, cars, half tracks, trucks, and an advanced construction vehicle, which I'll show you once we get there. And of course a hospital. So let's start off and build a uh, car factory. We're going to bring this guy over here. And here we have a 12-man squad recruited, which is represented by this con icon, and a number 12 at the bottom of it. So we're going to move this guy up here just ahead of this four-man squad and I'm going to deselect and our truck is stopped and what we're going to do is going to turn him into a car factory and now the same thing will happen just like the barracks and we'll just wait for him to uh, finish with that now we have a, a lone sniper we're going to move him over here I don't like how they clip through the buildings. I don't know what the deal is with that, so I can't really, I can't really help you. But the sniper is represented by this icon. It's pretty obvious that he's a sniper, and it's one guy. All right, the third building we're going to build uh, using the uh, last construction vehicle, which is still on the the panel here, is a hospital. And let's move this guy um, over here. Now we have an AT squad queued up, which is, consists of three guys and represented on the panel with uh, three AT. So we're going to move these guys right to here. And we should have one more squad coming. Actually, I'm going to recruit the Special Forces squad. Alright, what just queued up is... Uh, spawn rather is the MG infantry squad, which is these guys MG infantry squad recruited So you have uh, a machine gunner and two riflemen and actually one rifleman and a uh, assault rifleman and this squad we're gonna move Let's see. I don't think I can put them right here. So I'll have to put them up here All right, so that's him 
Now this truck we're going to turn into a car a hospital. And as you look at our power supply, it's it's dropped under the 4,000 mark. That's because we spent points in order to build. Now I'll, I'll go over on how to gather uh, points or what we call resources in a minute here. Just want to go over the uh, the the last squad here that we're that's about to spawn soon. All right, let's actually go over the car factory. Uh, this is the car factory. And you get seven options to build uh, different vehicles. Now you have an uh, option to build an Opal Blitz, a Cuba Wagon, which is a car, a half track, which has a machine gun on it, a half track which has an anti-air it's kind of like a I think it's 30 millimeter uh, cannon and then you have an ambulance a repair truck and an advanced construction vehicle which I'll show you in a minute all right with this building what we want to start off with in order if you have a, a map or a mission where you want to uh, transport your troops anywhere then you're gonna to want to definitely use either the opal blitz the cuba wagon or the half track these other ones are really meant for uh, transporting because they have specific functions you know ambulance and repair all right so we are going to get three opal blitz blitzes queued up to spawn and one half track and then what we're gonna do is check out our advanced or a special forces squad and a hospital first we're gonna start with the hospital now this hospital if you click on it it only gives you one button and what this does is this is kinda like an upgrade which creates which I'll do it creates a ring around the building which any infantry that is wounded can go within inside this ring and get healed as you know the you see this green bar as I said before represents their health and if their health is low you could just uh, send these guys to in this you know close to this building and, and they'll get healed and that's basically what that does and you could re uh, upgrade it more but it, it will cost points because the, the cost is 150 points and, 100, and it takes 120 seconds to upgrade so let's go to the special forces squad now these guys have an enhanced function uh, that the all other squads do not have. For example, you have your lone soldier or your single soldier, one soldier. He only has his basic commands. And then you have the squad of four, which also has the same thing. You have the 12-man squad, which also has the same thing. The sniper doesn't have any special abilities. The AT guys don't have any special abilities, nor does the MG squad, but the Special Forces squad do. Now here's what you could do with the Special Forces squads besides just being infantry and, and so forth, is it they have these three options where they can call additional forces or uh, functions into the mission. Now as you can see here, you have an artillery uh, icon for this button and this says request heavy heavy artillery uh, support this costs 1000 of the power which we do not meet so if you click on that you'll get this uh, big white circle this big white circle uh, is represented based on where this squad is so if this squad is let's say they move some like over here then this cir big circle will follow them this is basically the range of where you could uh, call artillery but we don't have the points for that so when you do call artillery it'll say not enough power and too far off so not enough power means we don't have enough uh, power here which costs a thousand of the power we don't want to use that because it, it takes a long time to get that power up so you have to be very um, you have to kind of pay attention to what your what the situation is in the battle in the mission in order to use this and when to use it because it only happens once 
And then next is a tactical bombing raid. This costs 2,000 of the power, so you really want to get your points up there before you start using these. The airborne drop, though, uh, costs a little bit less than the, well, actually a little bit more than the tactical bombing raid, but uh, it costs 2,500 of the power. I wish it cost of the supplies, but it doesn't. The tactical bombing raid will call a Stuka, and this Stuka, which is a fighter plane, a bomber plane, will fly around the battlefield uh, in, in the area that you click on. So, for example, obviously we don't have the points, so I can't really do nothing, but you'll get this. You'll get this little icon under the cursor, and when you click on the, on the, on the, uh, the screen, you know, within this circle, it has to be within this white circle, the bomber will eventually fly to that position and then seek out any enemy infantry or tanks or vehicles or whatever that you have and uh, basically bomb them and engage them until either he gets shot down or he runs out of fuel or ammo and, and just flies around. All right, and uh, of course, if you click on the ground, you don't not enough power and it's too far off. Too far off means actually too far away. So, all right, the same thing with the airborne. If you click on the airborne, costs 2500 and it, you get this huge ring and if you click within this ring we don't have the points for it so you'll get this uh, within what is it uh, so many seconds I forget what it is not not too long you'll get a bunch of parachutes with infantry dropping down from the sky and they won't be part of a squad they will be uh, separate individual infantry that will engage any enemy infantry or even even enemy uh, vehicles uh, on the ground and within the area of, of of what they could see, and that's what these guys do. But these guys usually you don't want to bring into the battle until uh, you have sufficient amount of points built up, and uh, we'll go over that in a few minutes after we check out these new vehicles that we just recruited. All right, we have four vehicles that just spawned in. We have an Opal Blitz, which is represented by this icon. And we have a half track, which is represented by this icon. So let's move our half track uh, to a better location. And just like the infantry, you just right click on the ground, hold your right mouse button down, and basically move your mouse around uh, where you want, and then just let go of the mouse, and your half track will go there. Considering this is a beta mission mode, uh, this still needs to be tweaked because when you go here they don't exactly move exact to where the cursor is at so I think this just needs to be tweaked a little bit and it'll be fine so we're gonna move this guy over here and then go to our truck move him over here it's, you can't group these together you can't draw draw, uh, draw a box around them and then uh, click on the ground I wish you could do that but uh, we don't have that function or feature in the game yet. So we'll move this guy over here. And the AI kind of gets stupid. Drive through the building. I don't, I don't know why they do that. There's some collision issue, I guess. I don't. I don't know. I can't explain it. It is what it is. All right, put all our trucks here. And um, now, what we want to do is put these guys. Get all these guys that we got standing around into these vehicles. Now how do we do that? First let's start off with a our four man infantry squad and let's get them into the half track. Now what you do is you want to click on your four man infantry squad whether you click on them by themselves with your cursor or whether you click on the icon. Clicking on the icon is, is faster and more efficient but either way, either way it works. So what you do is you go to the vehicle that you want them to get into 
and you right click on the ground next to them and you'll get this little uh, icon marker that'll show up and then the squad will uh, run towards the vehicle open the back door and basically get in all right now they're in the vehicle now there is a limited limited space so if you look at um, how much is left in terms of space you could probably fit one more squad you can't fit a 12-man squad in a half track you can fit them in in an opal blitz so opal blitz is ideal for 12-man squads so we could fit the AT squad in the half track so we'll put them in there and here they go Alright, they are all in there. Now if you look at the half track, what's left, there's maybe one more seat. Now if we try to add, let's say, the MG squad and, and, and tell them to get in there, you'll get not enough space in selected vehicle. So what, what we probably could fit is the sniper. So we'll try the sniper. And the sniper will fit because we have one seat left in the truck. This guy apparently sat over here. Actually, you might actually be able to fit this guy in the half track. Let's see. Nope. Alright, so you can't fit him. I'll just move him over there. And now, for the 12-man squad, you really can't fit them in anything else. You can't fit them in the half track. You can only fit them in the opal blitz. And they will all fit in there. So, same thing click on your 12-man squad and then right click next to the vehicle sometimes it takes a couple times to get it right you could either click on either side but they'll move to it and these guys will get in the truck too bad they don't open the back door and get in that would be rather that would be a bit more immersive and you'll get you also get in these uh, opal blitzes you'll get one guy that sits in the front on the left side the driver comes with the uh, the truck so you have one guy in the truck and now for the rest of the squads we have two more opal blitzes so we could put the mg squad In this truck and we can put our special forces squad also on the truck We could probably add our lone soldier to this truck too, because it's it's got quite a bit of room left. So we'll also put them in there. He's probably gonna run through the building. Yeah. Ghost in the machine. And there we are. All right. Before we go on here with another. Uh, function and feature of the mission I want to go to the car factory and queue up an advanced construction vehicle which has further uh, things that you could spawn and build um, like kind of like what this car factory does so let's queue him up uh, the car f the advanced construction vehicle costs 500 of your points so if you don't have 500 of your points you're not gonna it's gonna say insufficient funds all right let's wait for him to uh, spawn and right now what we want to do is I'm gonna move the half track let's let him spawn and uh, I want to go to the map 
you have your base here this is your camera so if I went back in the game and moved my camera to let's say here this is your camera represented by a black triangle these are represented by your those static MG's in the in trenches this is represented by the uh, advanced construction vehicle that just spawned which is this we'll go over this in a, in a minute and you have your other forces that we uh, have in trucks so we have an opal blitz that's empty that we never put any soldiers in and we have uh, let's see the half track opal blitz and other opal blitz now with these on the map here you could tell or command these vehicles and infantry even infantry where to go so for example I'm gonna go to my single soldier tell him to disembark and he'll get out we'll move them right here and I'll show you on the map what it looks like you just deselect them for the moment and here he is right here now we could tell him to go right here so what you do is you click on him on the map and then right click on the map where you want him to go just like I did so now he's moving and he moved up to that position right now we're just gonna put him in uh, let's see he was in the opal blitz so let's put him back in the opal blitz and go back to the map so you can see he's moving so this is this is real time and uh, he'll get into this he'll get into the opal blitz All right, let's continue on. I want to show you um, what's called strategic points. This is how we gather resources and increase our points. Now, if you could see here, we have a circle, white ring, and a flagpole that, when you go to the map, is represented by a white dot. Now these white dots, uh, when you capture them, right now this is neutral, and when you go to capture them, uh, let's go to our half track and send our half track over there. So we're going to go here. And there goes our half track. go into our map. So the half track uh, will go here and in order to what we want to do for these tr strategic points or SPs is we want to capture these and again this is what gives us points in order to build more stuff. The more points we have the more stuff we can build the more we can enhance and upgrade uh, our, our army and our base. So here he comes, almost here. In order to capture this, you just need to get an infantry soldier near or in this ring for it to change. Uh, it'll 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 change. I'll show you when when he when the soldier changes it. I'm going to use the I'll tell him to go right here. Yeah, watch out for that pole. All right, we're going to get, oh, he didn't get into the truck. He got into the opal blitz, so that's no big deal. We have, let's see, we had an AT squad in here, I think. No, we had the, yeah, sniper. So we'll tell the sniper to get out and uh, we'll basically put him by the flag. Now, when you put them by the flag, you'll get this banner that comes up. Our forces are attacking a strategic point. And when you go to the map, you'll see this little timer that counts down from 80 seconds. And 
the icon will be red. Once it's done counting down, then you'll get uh, a blue uh, marker that shows up. And then if you go to the strategic point itself, uh, the German flag will show up. And of course you get this bluish ring. Now if you look at our points for our supplies, this, this will give us supplies. We've added 10 points to this number. So instead of uh, 10 point whatever it was, 5 I think, you get 23.2. And this also adds uh, a couple of points or a few points to our power. So we got, uh, um, we had 0.3 of the power and now we got 0.5 which is slow but the more uh, strategic points you capture that number goes up so for every strategic point you capture those number will, numbers will go up sig significantly alright let's go back to the map and I wanna explain and tell you about the enemy the enemy you're fighting is controlled by Hentman A3. Hentman A3 is the artificial commander that Rydegear built. It's a AI commanding system for the AI. And these guys basically act on their own. You have no influence over them other than what you capture in terms of the strategic points or uh, what forces you combat with, with them. And they basically respond accordingly. So it's basically you're fighting a artificial commander. Now when the Soviets capture strategic points their icon changes to this and they gain points they just like you they need points as well in order to build their forces and most of the city they have right now these are various strategic points that have been captured so we can expect a lot of different stuff coming from them right now so um, let's go back to the base so what we do is we press home H on our keyboard and here we are back at the base and what I want to do is I want to take a look at this uh, advanced construction vehicle that uh, spawned a little while ago and we just click on them and here we get two options to build two additional building types uh, one building we can build is called a tank factory and this costs 1000 of our points and 800 of the power so it is very costly and takes 140 seconds so it's it's very worthwhile to have this because it'll allow you to build tanks this other building is called the logistics which also is costly in terms of the uh, supplies it takes 180 seconds to to build uh, let's move this guy uh, over here and get a oh, he's move closer and then we're gonna build him into a tank factory All right now as you can see the icons here have lit up and turn red that means that the enemy is close to us and that they're engaging our forces so let's go to the half track and tell them to disembark let's see I don't know where the enemy forces are the enemy forces are trying to capture this strategic point uh oh they have a tank uh oh here's a tank right here They got tanks. They got tanks. Come on, guys. Come on. Whoa. What the hell was that? That was a bug. Whoa. Move these guys out of here. If we can. Just missed them. Engage them. And this is what happens when the enemy captures this. Yeah, they got 
they destroyed our half track. Now when your forces get killed, they'll disappear from this the, the top panel here. Our forces are attacking a strategic point, which is basically these guys. Uh, this guy, really. The rest of them are dead. Recapturing this point. If you look on the map, you can see that it'll uh, it'll switch. There we go. Alright, this guy has got a little low health, so let's move him over here, out of the way. So all the guys, wow, they got a couple tanks. We're in trouble. Alright, let's get back to base. We're going to tell this guy to go back home. Tell these guys to move over here before we get blown away. I'm just moving these guys over here for now. Yeah, unit lost. They uh, killed my AT guy that was over here, so... What we want to do is we want to build, uh, recruit a couple AT infantry squads. And before those tanks come over here and start destroying our base, uh, we're going to get some tanks built. So, as we can see, uh, this is what the tank uh, factory looks like and if you click on it you get three options for tanks which more will be added and I'll show you that in a minute so we have uh, the Stug which has 600 you have Panzer IV and you have a Panther uh, let's get two, one Stug Cost less than a, than a Panzer IV. A Panzer IV costs 150 seconds. This costs 130. We got a fresh new AT squad. Oh, here's a bug. Yeah, they're destroying our forces. This is not good. This is not the way to play the game because, <laughs> uh, yeah, these guys are dead. These guys are dead. That's, that's not good. So you definitely want, uh, to build your forces, uh, before the enemy gets ahead and comes and takes your base. Now, this red banner that comes up, our base is under attack, control level 100, means that there's an enemy in our base. There's an enemy in our base, which, if he destroys all these buildings, he can't destroy the red building or our headquarters. But if he destroys all our buildings and all our infantry, even the static weapons, then this number will start counting down to zero. If it hits zero, the mission will end, and basically you lose the mission in the, in the game overall. So we definitely want to recruit another squad, because until the tank uh, gets recruited, he can't take care of the uh, enemy tank that's here. So, we've got an AP AT infantry squad coming. I want to show you a another feature of this uh, mission mode. And this is called incarnating. This is not really the way to do it. I, I would, I have hoped not to have to engage the enemy, but uh, we're going to do it on this one. Here we have a tank. The tank is represented by this kind of diamond slanted uh, tank icon. So here we have a stug. Move the stug over here. He's getting hit by uh, AP rounds from uh, enemy tanks. All 
Alright, this is the AT Squad. And what you do to incarnate, incarnate means to become. So what you do is you hover your mouse cursor over the soldier, doesn't matter which one. I'll go over the commander so I can command them. And then you hold down your left, uh, your, your shift button, it doesn't matter which one, left or right shift button on your keyboard. And then you press your uh, click on you click on your middle mouse button. So now you could play in first and third person. All right, I'm gonna tell these guys to take cover, and we're gonna see if we can take care of this. Take care of this tank before they do too much damage. I think we got him. <laughs> Other tank move? Wow. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> wow. Just missed me too. Is he done? Oh, okay, he killed me. Now, when you get killed in this mission, uh, you basically go to the team switch because the mission's not over until the commander is dead, which is way in a headquarters somewhere else. So what you do is you go to team switch, click on uh, Colonel Group Leader, switch you end up back at the headquarters because this guy right here is your main player. If he gets killed, the mission is over. So, uh, in order to get to the battlefield and command further, then you want to do that. Alright, we got a tank. Now, we can even control tanks. Same thing. Wait for the uh, Panzer IV to, to spawn because my, my engine is down. All right, if you want to ever get out of a uh, incarnation or where you basically take over another soldier, or tank, or vehicle, you just go scroll your action menu, go to you go to Commander screen. I'll wait for the Panzer IV to come out. We'll queue up a. Uh, AT squad. Okay, this tank is pretty much screwed. And here's a bug. Here's a bug. Like I said, this is still beta, so we're going to run into issues and whatnot. How far is the... It's almost done. Yeah, this is, this is definitely not the way to... Um, play the game you want you want to have your forces built up already alright this guy is way out here apparently there's a tank out there somewhere I don't know where you can usually you can look on the map Tank. Wow, they got a lot of tanks coming in. Alright, so here's our Panzer IV. I'm gonna get away from the base so we can get some distance. If I can make a difference.
took out our tank factory, and this this is this is trouble. And they have enemy infantry over here. We got one guy here. See if we can do anything. Good. They'll take out all the buildings. construction vehicle created and we're going to create a logistics building or vehicle so we're gonna move this guy over here and we have our first tanks uh, spawn so we're gonna move him off to the road and for the advanced construction vehicle you have uh, these two options for it so you could build a you can build a tank factory as we know and you can build a logistics logistics costs 1200 supply and 100 power takes 180 seconds to uh, spawn so we're gonna get that going and once that's done I'll show you more of it in the meantime we're gonna get our tank to the city and then we're gonna go to the map all right on the map I uh, went ahead and moved some of my forces to the map and I captured a bunch of strategic points just to kind of keep the enemy forces at bay otherwise they would come to our base and pretty much wipe us out so we don't want that. But um, I have captured, as you can see, several strategic points and we are gaining uh, points from them. There is a strategic point that was captured by the Russians one that was here and uh, I'm gonna move this guy down this way this guy down this way and you could move your you can move your forces to uh, various spots on the map sometimes you gotta really watch them because these guys can kind of get stuck in buildings and stuff like that so it really depends open field you shouldn't have any problems all right here is our tank you can see on the map we're gonna move him to the city and all you have to do is just left click on their icon which is this and then right click where you want him to go and then just like you do um, and if you want to follow him you just click on the icon and you'll see where he's going alright guys the uh, advanced construction vehicle is turned into a logistics building and this is what it looks like with this now 
uh, your points, the number of points you have di dictates what you're able to get. So this is basically your vehicle that upgrades everything. So uh, here we have improved combat training, which you can increase the skill of your troops. So pretty much everybody that starts is skill level one. When you when you use this, they'll increase to level two. And then this one we have fuel saving training. So you basically tank burns less power and stuff. And then you have ammo saving training. This is improved supply chain efficiency. So like it says, faster resource gain. So your strategic points will give you uh, the points faster. So as you can see here, we got 83.3 uh, power or supplies coming in, and you see the rate at which this the big number changes. That would actually uh, be faster. All right. The other thing is request heavy tank allocation. This will only show up when you have uh, the power supply. This at the level of 2,000. So you need a certain amount of points in order to get that. And then this is request static weaponry uh, allocation. You need at least 200 uh, power points in order to, for that to show up. Most times you'd be able to get this right away. And with this, when you click on this, you get this message. It com comes up says static weaponry allocation granted. You can only get that one time because there's no other thing for it. And in order to use that, what you need is an advanced construction vehicle. So we'll queue one of those up and then I'll show you how that works. Alright, coming back again. Uh, our advanced construction vehicle just uh, spawned. And we gained more points, which now allows us to request very heavy tank allocation. So this one is for the Tiger tank. If you click on that, of course, it'll cost you points. If you click on this, uh, the request very heavy tank allocation means it's going to be a tiger two that that spawns. So uh, what we're going to do instead is we're going to I'm going to show you what the statics uh, static can do. You have um, three new things added to the menu now instead of just the tank factory and the logistics. You have now a uh, flak AA a mortar it's basically a trench with a mortar in it and then you have a pack 40 now these you could put anywhere you want so I'm going to show you how this goes this guy we're going to drive up here We're going to turn this into an AT gun, basically protect our base. And the trick with this is you want to face the vehicle in the direction that you want this gun to face. So right here is good. Once that, once that is done being built, a pack 40 will be sitting here and be able to protect this whole area. All right, everybody, I want to uh, conclude this video. I hope this introduction and demonstration of Ragnarok 44 has interested you and hope you enjoyed and learned something uh, about the mission and uh, what you can do with it. And uh, hope to see you on some more videos for missions I plan to be building. Uh, talk to you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.